So this is French soccer player Kurt Zuma, who was just fined $300,000, or about two weeks salary for him, after footage emerged of him kicking, slapping, and throwing shoes at his cats. In an era where people can get canceled for saying words, bad jokes, sharing opinions, this has me asking the question, should celebrity animal abusers get canceled? And if you answered yes to that question, I want to show you something. This is the nervous system of a cat. That's how they feel pain. This is the nervous system of a cat. Explain to me why it's wrong for this soccer player to kick a cat, but it's okay for his entire fucking team to pay for cows that have their throats slit. Do the same to pigs that are actually smarter than a lot of humans, etc. Joe Rogan doesn't just shoot animals, even though he knows he doesn't have to. I think you could definitely be healthy and be a vegan. According to everything this guy was showing me, mostly wound up agreeing with the guy who made the Game Changers documentary. Mostly with what he was saying in terms of science, in terms of uh, whether or not it's healthy to eat a 100% vegan diet. According to everything he's showing me, it is. It is? Yeah, according to everything he was showing me, and he had as much science as you could, yeah. you know, it's just a matter of doing it properly. Mm -hmm. He's sponsored by and actively promotes The Butcher Box, who stabs cows, pigs, and chickens to death for profit. What about all the celebrities who promoted the baby-stealing, rape rat based dairy industry with all those Got Milk ads over the years? I'm seeing a lot of people advocate for violence against this soccer player in the comments section who themselves demand violence and abuse and slaughter of equally sentient beings for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Should all celebrity animal abusers get canceled if we're gonna stop being hypocrites now? Now, I'm not going to advocate for that to be the case because I know most of us were brainwashed as children into thinking there's certain animals you're supposed to love and cuddle and cherish and other animals that it's okay to cage and abuse and kill. And you can't blame people for believing what they were brainwashed to believe as children. And little by little, million by million people over the weeks and months, the world is not that slowly going vegan and people are waking up. I'm making this video to ask the question, how do we help people make that connection? faster. That's not a rhetorical question. I really want your ideas. Please share them. Or if you're watching this on your phone, please share them. You know, earlier I accused Zuma's entire team of killing animals, and that may actually not be true. Because even though Zuma's French, he plays in the English Premier League, and England is officially the vegan capital of the world at the moment. And when I'm lucky enough to run into British people, y'all are some funny ass motherfuckers, can't wait to visit again. And when I ask you, why do you think Britain is such a vegan country, most of them give a similar answer and say, well, you know, we're a nation of animal lovers, and okay, I'm not gonna fuck, I'm gonna butcher the accent. But I think they're onto something, because not only is Britain a nation of animal lovers, I think they're a nation specifically of dog lovers. And if you look at a lot of the breeds of dogs that exist now, a lot of them um, originate in either Britain or Germany, which are two of the most vegan countries in the world. Germany has an entire supermarket chain called Vegans, can't wait to fucking visit Deutschland either. And the thing about having animals in your family, the thing about having dogs as pets, as, as companions, as family members, as opposed to having dogs as slaves on the farm, as servants, or just dogs being essentially feral animals, vermin as they're seen in some countries if they're street animals, is that you get to see and experience intimately the way that dogs are, you know, for, for, for let's be straight up about it, dogs are people, animals are people, they have a consciousness, they have a soul, there's no good reason that we would ignore their feelings, ignore their suffering, that you would pay attention to a human. It's just, it's just fucking obvious. Now to make that connection from a dog to a pig is not that big a jump compared to making that connection, for a lot of people at least, from a human to a pig or a human to a chicken. And so I think that's true. I think that's one of the reasons that Britain is such a vegan country. You know, some of you know I started an animal rights dedicated company called Vegan Brain Food. By the way, for those who've been writing to me, Vegan Brain Food is back in stock, thankfully. I'm gonna put that link below. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that the next supplement I'm working on isn't for people at all. It's gonna be for dogs. It's specifically designed for dogs, actually dogs and cats, um, to help prevent cancer because cancer is the number one cause of death in the nicest people on earth, dogs. Now, unlike the 20% of profits from vegan brain food, which is primarily benefiting endangered species and rescued farm animals, the 20% of profits from the supplement for dogs is actually gonna be primarily aimed to benefit um, both rescuing street dogs and rescuing dogs from the meat trade in East Asia and West Africa, where it's still common, sadly, for people to eat dogs. We're gonna be supporting local groups who are working to end that trade. And I know some people would say, you know, it's cool for you to do this supplement to help dogs live longer because people um, especially in the West, spend a lot of money on their dogs, but you should probably use that 20% of profits or whatever you can afford. I'm planning to increase that. Um, you know, if I can personally get out of debt, um, you should use that money to help farm animals because they're the most abused animals on the planet. The answer to that, I would say is number one, 
I mean, there's a dog meat industry. So dogs are farm animals in, in Asia and Africa, still, sadly. Second thing I wanna point at is that the dog meat trade, thankfully, is rapidly going away in China and South Korea and in Africa. And that's partially driven by the increase in pet culture in having dogs as family members. Now, I haven't looked this up because I don't think I need to because I think it's fucking obvious. If you look at the people in China, South Korea, West Africa, who are leading a fight to abolish the dog meat trade, I'm gonna take a wild fucking guess and assume that a lot of those people have dog children of their own, have adopted dogs of their own. Shit, my son Lubu's my biggest inspiration towards activism. I mean, look at this guy. So if we're working to rescue dogs from the meat trade and get them adopted, um, I think we're not only gonna be saving the lives of those dogs, we're gonna be helping to change the mentality of the entire society. Um, the way people see animals. And I think dogs are the best ambassadors. Dogs and cats, well, really any animals, but dogs are just so fucking human, <laughs> so fucking close to us because we've selectively bred them to essentially have human characteristics. They understand human faces better than chimpanzees do. I think dogs are the best ambassadors for the animal kingdom to hopefully help people open up their minds, open up their hearts to the suffering of the entire animal kingdom and for them to hopefully change what they eat, what they wear eventually as a result. Thank you so much for lending me your ears and your eyes. You can have them back now. Very much looking forward to your thoughts on all this. Have an amazing day. Live long and prosper and vegan power.